Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, today on my bench is a Sony SL-C7UB. It's exactly what is on the box. Uh, this particular video recorder I've had for 20 years uh, and it's been in storage for 10 and I haven't opened this up in 10 years. It was taped up for uh, a house move uh, from uh, London to Wiltshire, uh, London in the UK to Wiltshire. Uh, and it was never opened, and I've realised actually it's a bit more than 10 years. Uh, I moved out of London in, oh, wow, uh, oh God, February 2012. So it's 11 years. Nearly 12, nearly 12 actually, yeah. Um, it hasn't really been touched, uh, and it's moved from house to house. Um, back when I got it, I did a full restoration of the machine, uh, of the video recorder. Belts, video head, uh, uh, full capacitive replacement. Absolutely everything was done on this machine. And I used it for about four or five years. Then I put it away and then it used to come out bits and pieces, I'd like to do a few bits and pieces. And then, yeah, uh, when I left London um, and moved out to Wiltshire, going towards Bristol, this video recorder has just sat in this box for 12 years. And I only realised this quite recently when I've been looking through my loft. I've been trying to make some more space uh, in there. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff and I've got more TVs coming in. So I've had to make a bit more space. And the box is a little battered. It's had it's a bit in, pushed in because it's had stuff sitting on top of it. Uh, it should be fine in there. The actual, it may even be still in its packaging. I can't remember. I think it's high time this machine saw the light of day. I've got no idea if it works. It may play, it may work. I've got no idea. No idea at all. So, let's open this. There we go. So yeah, it's been in storage all this time. Um, is it? Yeah, it is a little damp because it's been in the loft for so long. Uh, a little bit of dust, nothing too major. Uh, in fact, actually, I just realised what I can do is I can just pull the poly inserts out. I have got the uh, the uh, remote control for this. It's in my uh, I've got a big box full of remote controls for all sorts of machines and stuff. So let's see whether we can lift this out. Whew. This machine, um, I think I bought it from a car boot sale. Uh, I think it was somewhere down in Kent, somewhere like that. It was near my old house. Uh, I used to live on the outskirts of London, on the southeast side. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember the place of it. It starts with P. But yeah, it was a, uh, a car boot sale. I think I only paid about £20 for it. Probably about what it's worth right now. Um, I've got a few of these actually, but this is the very first one I, I, I picked up in modern times. I did have a Sony C5 um, back when I was a teenager. I picked that one up from a, uh, some sort of jumble sale or whatever, uh, and I fixed it and then I broke it and then I threw it away, but that was how I learnt. It's a big old beast. It's a big old beast. The Sony C7 was a uh, top-end Betamax machine from... Ooh, about 1980, something like that, 1980 to 82. These were incredibly advanced in the day. These were seriously advanced. The trouble is, is that they were just so huge. Um, and top-loading machines were starting to go out of, out of uh, favour when front-loading machines came in, and the Sony C6 came in in, what, 1982, something, 81, 82. Um, but this had a lot of trick functions and... Um, uh, uh, advanced uh, stills and t uh, uh, two times speed way before VHS had it. This is uh, a Beta 2, so this is not the original Beta 1 the speed. Uh, this is uh, the standard in the UK. We only really got 
uh, beta 2 in, in the United States they've got beta 3 long play and an EP and all sorts uh, but we only really got beta 2 these machines are large bulky complex and difficult to keep going whenever I see one I, I sort of think of it it's the equivalent of like an old Jaguar car or a Range Rover uh, or an old Rolls-Royce um, exquisitely made great when they're new or sort of middle aged, but when they, once they get into their old age, they become money pits. And these Sony C7s are money pits. They really are. Um, all sorts of problems plague them. Uh, the buttons on the top here, there's a, a, a panel, if I can get it open. Yeah. Uh, there's buttons, let's see what I can, here. Um, there's buttons on the top here that basically just die. The belts are always a problem with these. The transport mechanism is reasonably reliable, but yeah, it, it can actually start chewing tapes up. Plastic buttons here uh, on the on the front can break and the, and they go all wonky. Um, oh, it's just it's just a litany of problems. Um, and, and also on the uh, clock here on this side, there's a, a battery, or it's a, it's, a, it's a, either a battery or it's a capacitor or something like that, which leaks and it literally destroys the clock. All of the circuitry, circuit boards and the circuitry for the clock gets destroyed. This one, I removed the battery and cleaned it all up. And I've got at least another two or three where exactly that's happened. Um, I really love these machines, though. These are uh, elegant machines. Uh, I love working on these. These are, are, are truly mechanical. Just like the original SL8000 uh, and 8080s, which I've featured on my um, channel. These are just lovely to work on. They're complex and they can be really a pain in the backside, but they do reward me with a good picture and generally, uh, once they're up and running, they will stay running for quite some time. Um, these also had uh, a, an auto changer, which was a device which sat on the top here. And you could put tapes in at the top and as the tapes would, um, uh, you could record something and then it would then eject the tape into a pod down here and then the next tape would go in. And it was all controlled through um, uh, the con uh, connectors on the front, uh, I believe. And they used to be incredibly rare, but I've seen about three or four of these um, C7 things. I think it's called AG7 or something like that. These are just simply a collector's piece now. Um, I, I wouldn't really use one on a daily basis. Um, I have got a good collection of Betamax machines. About 15, 20, something 15? Yeah, about 15 of them. Uh, all different uh, generations, uh, up to the latest. I've got a uh, SLHF950 up there, which is always going wrong. Every time I turn it on, something's broken with it. Um, they beca uh, Betamaxes became quite... Uh, brittle and temperamental um, as they went into the mid 80s. Uh, the sort of the early 80s, the uh, the first front loaders, the SLC6, yes, yeah, so of 20, 30, 40, and that sort of generation were actually quite reliable. Um, apart from the hold effect sensor on on the, on the motor, on the head drum, which if you look back at some of my videos, you'll see I've done now at least two of them. Um, but yeah. Um, it's nice to see it again. It is quite dusty and dirty. I didn't realise actually how uh, dusty and dirty it was. It has been in the box for, <laughs> yeah, 12 years. <laughs> and even before that, I would have probably not, it wouldn't have been my main machine for a couple of years. So, okay, let's take a quick look around it and, and, and the features and uh, and then eventually we'll, we'll power the thing up and see whether it actually works. So as I mentioned, uh, back in the day, these were a pretty advanced machine. Uh, so again, you've got uh, here on the, this side, you've got on, standby, and timer. So if you set the timer on the clock, you would press that button uh, and it would operate. Uh, so that's on there. You've got here, if I can get my finger in there, you have the ability to set the clock uh, and all the timer stuff. You've also got a bright and a dim uh, switch for the uh, main clock uh, on it. Uh, this is the main clock area here. Uh, then you've got eject and this is all soft touch stuff so this wasn't mechanical um, uh, piano key style. This was actually the first generation to really have uh, soft touch controls. 
Uh, so we're going to go eject, re rewind, stop, play, fast forward, record. These buttons get damaged so easily as well, they get knocked and banged. And then pause. It wasn't a uh, crystal clear pause picture, but it could be very close. And then here you've got picture search, so that's play and fast forward, so you could fast fast forward and rewind and see the picture. Uh, then down here you've got a, a, a play times three, so when you press that it will go into three times the speed and speed forward. Uh, and then you would press play again and it would then play normally. And then if you were in pause, you could then press this button here and go frame by frame. Or, if you use this control here, you could the speed of that slow motion uh, up here. And this looks remarkably like uh, one of the volume control of a uh, KV-1400 Sony Trilogon. Underneath here is uh, a couple of uh, uh, controls. Is the end of alarm tape, so uh, it would make a beep when it got to the end of the alarm. The APS, I can't remember exactly what it is. It could be auto program um, uh, sensor. Uh, you could also audio dub, so as you were playing something, you could press that and you could then record a new audio over the tape without losing the video. Then up top here, you've got a, a mechanical counter with a reset and an on-off button here. Um, down on the front here would be the channel selection with the channel indicator just here. Uh, underneath, oh, okay, that's a really difficult one. There we go. Underneath there is tracking, microphone, input select for camera or line or stuff like that, and a camera control. So, yes, it's a very heavy machine to try and manipulate. Then underneath here would be the tuning controls. And it was all um, digital, well not digital, but uh, no physical controls. So it would actually store it in memory. Uh, so again, you can do the channel search here, put a test signal on, set the AFT, fine tuning control, uh, and again, and also press the automatic programming, and it would scan the channels and show you the signal strength here. And that is the instructions on how to use it. Then, there's nothing much to see on either of the sides, but if we turn it round, we have uh, RF, uh, so you can select the actual RF uh, channel, the actual video recorder output on. Uh, aerial out to the TV, aerial in from the uh, aerial, and that looks a little dodgy there, so I might have to fix that. Video out and in on BNC connectors, and audio out on uh, RCA jacks. Then over here, you'd have um, your AC in, and you can actually also select which voltage, 110 or 240. And this one here is a Sony SL7UB. UB indicates the United Kingdom. Um, runs at 50 hertz, 45 watts, and it's serial number 249599. I have no idea if that's high or low in it. I don't know exactly what year this was. I can't remember. It's been quite a while since I've even looked at this machine. So, yeah. <sighs> Then on the top is where you put the tape. Uh, and again, it's all electronic control, so you can't eject without the power. It's time to power the video recorder up. Um, I've got a, the relevant power cable, which I'll plug in now. Um, I am going to run this on my um, isolation transformer. Uh, and I'm even going to put it on the dim bulb tester, because I don't know what this will do. So if I put that on load, plug that in there like that. I hope this cable actually works. I just grabbed it from the loft. Um, power on. It's on load. Uh, oh, hang on. Yeah. Oops. Put it in there. Put that in there. That's better. <laughs> so video recorder is plugged into the isolation transformer that's plugged into this socket here which is fed by this bulb under uh, using uh, using it as a load that is an uh, energy monitor it's saying 5.3 watts that is the uh, draw from the uh, transformers as it sits there there is no power on at the moment because there's a little on -off button down here so uh, you'll see it before me and there might be a bang I don't know I think Yes, it's dry enough. Um, I 
I think there might even be a moist uh, uh, moisture detector on this so it won't actually do anything. So here we go. One, two, three. Oh, I can hear the uh, isolation transformer. We have lightage. Yeah, we have lightage. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's put full power in. And I can hear the uh, isolation transformer buzzing away. Let's eject. Nice. Okay, so this is a tape. This is not a cleaning tape. Um, the cleaning tape uh, itself inside the case went bad years ago and I just simply ripped it out uh, and I put some videotape so I could use it as an ordinary cassette. So I don't know what's on this. Let's put it in. Now let's see whether it actually makes noises. Now with Betamaxes, oh, most Betamaxes, all, all Sony ones I believe, uh, they actually lace up as soon as you put the tape in and lace the tape round ready to go. Uh, Sanyo machines uh, had a system where it looked like the v VHS where you just put the tape in and when you press play it would then lace up. So here we go, it should lace up and it did. Let's try fast forward. That ain't moving. That, that ain't moving at all. So it sounds like belts are a problem with this. Okay. Press pause. Play. It's making noises. No, I don't think it's very happy. No, it's now locked up. I think we'll take the tape out. This may break the tape. Oh no, it didn't. Um, one of the things that happen is that the um, take up spool here uh, doesn't spin uh, as it's putting the tape back in and then it just leaves a mess of tape all over the place. So, it looks like the machine's usable in terms of it's not gonna blow up. Let's take it open and have a look inside. So all the covers are off. Um, I've moved this circuit board here, which is the um, uh, noise cancelling audio board here. I think it's the audio board. Might be. Can't remember. It's been a while since I've uh, worked on one of these. And I think this machine I've even dismantled near enough down to its chassis uh, back in the day. Um, so, okay, let's eject. There we go. So if I put the tape in and I press down and it takes the tape in. Let's see whether we can get a fast forward. Yeah, this looks like it could be actually a stiction on the tape. I'm just seeing the tape stuck on that on that thing. So let's eject. Okay. Oh yes, 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 yes. Let's have a quick look at the tape. <laughs> we actually have some moisture on the tape um, it looks like ooh, put it there it looks like if I just move this round and I'm actually going to take you off the stand and show you it so as you can see there um, there's moisture on the uh, the drum itself um, yeah it's it's actually quite damp so this thing is just starting to warm up. Um, my offices are quite warm, naturally quite warm. I don't have any heating on in here, but it's about 20 degrees and it's about four degrees Celsius outside. So uh, yeah, 
the reason it, it wouldn't actually fast forward and rewind is because the tape was sticking to the drum uh, which ain't great um, I should have checked for that but hey ho we all make mistakes yeah this needs to basically dethaw um, and, and warm up the metal is very cold you can actually feel it it's actually quite cold um, and yes so it's uh, wait for it to um, warm up before I can really start trying it out okay so um, it's warmed up uh, the condensation has gone from the video head um, it's just starting to feel warm uh, I went ahead and actually cleaned the, the video head uh, and the drum and yes there was there was a bit of dirt and a bit of crap on there uh, I'm not surprised so okay let's have a look at this tape Has this tape actually yeah I think that's fine uh, let's uh, eject that and let's see whether Video head is still a little. There we go. Cool. I'm just going to fast forward all the way through to the end of the tape um, and then um, they rewind it back. Let's exercise it before we do anything with it. There we go. Let's rewind. That's going at a reasonable pace. That's what I would expect. Counters running. It's all a good sign. Hopefully all the rubbers haven't perished. That didn't look very healthy. A bit of tape was a bit duff. So, okay. Let's press play. It's working. But do we have a picture? That's that's the next thing. I do remember this machine was actually in very good condition. Uh, I did a lot of work on this on this. Uh, again, I went through and adjusted. I had the, I've got a tape tension uh, tape which shows you the tension of the uh, uh, take up reel and supply reel. And I went through the whole thing and did a complete service on this. Had it working really well. Let's hook this up to the TV and see whether we get a picture. Video recorder is connected up to the TV through RF. Uh, what I need to do is set a test signal on. Let's see whether we're even remotely close. It looks like um, the RF tuner is not working properly. Yeah. It's trying to lock on there, fails, and then stops. So uh, what I can do is I think I can actually take uh, the uh, output and put it straight into the TV. Uh, I think I've got all the connectors to do that. Let's press play. Oh, we have a picture. Not a great one. Really, really not a great one. That's quite poor. So if I press pause, that's not bad. That's a decent freeze frame. So if I press frame again, it'll try and find it. There we go. It sort of hunts around to get it. Then, oh, it's still hunting. <laughs> right, so if I then turn, push the uh, slow-mo control along. As you can see, if I put it right across to the end, that's virtually at full speed. Press the times three. So you can see, for a, a, a Betamax from 1980, this is a, this is reasonably advanced. Um, this would have been uh, commanded quite a premium at the time. Let's try a better tape. It's a little soft, but actually that's not too bad. 
um, bit wobbly. Um, yeah, the drum rotation is a little unstable, but I think with some running, I think this will be fine. Um, the fact that the tune is not working is interesting. Um, so if I do test, yeah, it's not going to show that on that. I think I just literally have to leave this running and get it warm. Um, it's been 12 years since it's run, so I, I'm just simply not surprised. So there we go. Let's see whether we can get a, a freeze frame. There we are. It's only um, half a field, not a full frame uh, 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 on there. So it, it is a little jittery. So let's press the frame. It's sort of thinking about it. Yeah, it's finding it. And there we are. So you can see <laughs> it's hunting around trying to get a a uh, a picture there. So it's probably sp skipping a couple of frames and then eventually getting there. Yeah, I said this is a, a very much a mechanical machine. It's it's not it's uh, uh of a period back in the uh, early 80s, uh, late 70s, early 80s, where um, there was just a large amount of mechanical mechanisms and stuff inside video recorders. Uh, and the electronics was only just starting to shrink. Uh, and also the size of the, uh, the actual uh, tape transport was also starting to reduce. So yeah, uh, let's try, let's have a little bit of audio, see whether we get a content match. It's not too bad. I'm actually surprised actually how good this picture is. I did do a lot to this. Um, yeah, that was a brand new head back in 2004, something like that. It's not long after I got the machine and I did the full refurb on it. So if you do the picture search, as you can see, there's a bit, a bit of static at the top. Uh, it's probably due to uh, the tape leaving the uh, head, so it's wobbling around and uh, uh, at the top there. Yeah, the tape tension at the top, bottom, yeah, bottom of the actual um, drum. And again, all those clicking, that's all big solenoids. Um, so I think I am going to let this machine run. I think I think it absolutely needs to be run. Uh, I'm going to actually going to rewind this tape and I'm going to let this tape play. Let's rewind. While this is re uh, rewinding, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the actual cover back on the top to hold the heat in uh, and and try to warm the machine up. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to even put the uh, audio board back on there. I think it's audio. I'm sure that's audio. I'm dead impressed that this thing actually runs and works. Um, I may even keep it down here over on that side there. Just run it for a while and see how it goes. The other Sony Betamaxes from uh, the, the late 70s. The buttons on here uh, have turned to mush. So if I actually try and set the clock, uh, you might actually see, as if I press the set clock, is that going to work? Let's rewind. getting stuck yeah 21 look as you can see oh it's got stuck <laughs> okay so I'm gonna put the cover back on I'm gonna put you over to one side and I'm gonna uh, put this all uh, some of it back together again there's stuff to do to this so uh, again the RF tuner is looking unhappy uh, the buttons are looking unhappy uh, I'm just nice to see this out uh, I haven't seen this this machine in 12 years it's just been stuck in a box still in quite reasonable condition just a few little marks and bangs from what i remember um yeah it's very good right okay let's put uh the um the shield back on the top screw that down and while this is going so yeah
So I've moved it across to this side. Um, just going to let it run. Um, it's about half nine, quarter to ten uh, at night here uh, in the lab. And so I'm going to let this uh, program run. This is uh, about 90 minutes in length, something like that. So uh, it will be finished by the time I go to bed. I'm going to switch it off actually and not leave it powered on uh, overnight. And then tomorrow I'm going to uh, actually have this running for pretty much uh, about 15 hours tomorrow so from when I first get up in the morning and I will just keep on playing uh, various tapes in it just to basically exercise it get it going um, get all the mechanisms moving uh, get some heat into it as well um, yeah and that should actually improve the picture a little bit it's looking soft it's looking it's it should be a slightly sharper than that uh, it's very it's starting to stabilize uh, there was quite a lot of jitter uh, horizontal jitter on that it still is a little bit but yeah um, and that TV is a very good quality picture uh, from a CRT so that should um, be uh, a quite a reasonable picture by the time this finishes warming up so that's the resurrection and analysis of this Sony C7 uh, Betamax video recorder again it has been 12 years since this is uh, yeah it was gonna it would have been actually probably October 2011 was the last time this was even powered on. That's a fair old time. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Um, I'm a small channel and I appreciate all the support. And I will see you on the next video.